Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, we have some big events coming around the corner, not only this Arctic air, which has gotten worse, especially with the wind chills for today and tomorrow. It's really going to be stronger than what we've been seeing so far, guys. Plus, we have this flooding. We have flooding coming in the south, also for the northwest. But this is a big area that has seen a lot of drought, and they really need this. So that's the good news as well. And we have the temperature battle. We still have this above average temperatures that's about to move in, and it is going towards the 14 days moving to above average pattern. So I'm gonna go through what you can expect, let you know what's going on with the severe weather as well. That way you know exactly what is around the corner. You've never been here before. Make sure you subscribe. I am all year along. Now let's get into your information, guys. Now first, let's go through your severe weather. I have noticed a lot of people wondering what's going on with severe weather. They've seen a big area of concern that could be coming with this next pattern. And I showed you yesterday how there was no severe weather. So I will update you right now. So I'm going to explain to you this pattern we're about to go into. So help share this video, guys. Let other people know exactly what is coming around the corner. You can see with your vorticity that we have that system going all the way towards northeast still as it moves through for this morning, all the way to the very early afternoon. Then it'll be over. Then you have a lot of the winds coming in, still bringing a lot of the lake effect snow. Matter of fact, you have a watch out all the way to the 29th. Then we're going to be on that deep trough from the southwest. And this is going to bring them storms continually from the southwest over towards the Great Lakes. And this is where you have that chance to bring the flooding in the south and our next snowstorm. And potentially, as you go into the beginning of December, bring in a deep trough and maybe bring in some severe weather with it. I'm going to go through that first, and then we'll go through everything else. Because you can see with your dew points, as you go into the 30th and the 1st, you start getting some strong dew points in the south. You see how it's going further to the south? It has shrunk since my last update. And you see there's a second wave that comes in also on the 3rd and 4th. And this brings more dew points towards the southeast. Now, there's been a lot of talk of some big severe weather coming out of it. And I'm still showing there's no severe weather. Let me explain. And you can see this in our shot right here on our vorticity. We start having that still that high ridge on the west coast. But this gives our polar jet and our subtropical jet. And they're separate. Then as we get closer to that event, you can see that the subtropical jet and the polar jet all become one and it's not really two different streams and usually when it's like that there's not going to be a severe weather event usually you need the subtropical jet doing something to the polar jet or vice versa just accenting the other one you can see the update in the cape in your lift all the food for the thunderstorms has grown in the south but look how it stays to the south and gets very much messed up very quickly then you get that second one that brews up right around the third and the fourth and look how just messed up all that is look at that this gonna bring some thunderstorms but that's not showing any kind of severe weather front coming with this at all small warning of some hail from what i can see as you go in towards thursday towards the 30th you start getting these lightning strikes that's showing maybe chances for some hail to come out of it now this is the latest update this is 6z only goes to four days and you can see how you start getting all the way from that purple and then friday you start getting the white in there now the white is indicative to a lot of lightning strikes coming in for southeastern texas this is over around the houston area maybe around the southern dfw area as you go from thursday evening showing a lot of lightning strikes going towards louisiana there is chances for a lot of lightning strikes Chances for large hail, guys, as it comes through for Friday for Louisiana and maybe for southern Mississippi for Friday morning as that goes through southern Alabama and the panhandle of Florida for Friday morning as well. Just a quick moving system as you go through the first one. Then we got that second one that's going to pop up as well. And this is right around Saturday. Not showing much. If anything, it'll be a threat for hail. And I will update you if anything ever comes out for that. You can see for the next eight days, still nothing. It's still a ghost town. Just some thunderstorms expected by day three. That's it. No severe thunderstorms, guys. So let me help you understand what it is you saw and what it is there actually is. Because you can see on my, my community tab, I posted this yesterday from SIPS. And you see how much smaller it got just from my community tab yesterday what the update was on a potential chance for severe weather so you can see up here that this is actually today's date this is showing the 27th so this is today's run of information now national weather service never shows it as strong as what sips shows it's a very sensitive software if you ask me and then when you go for day eight for the next possible severe weather of anything this is going all the way to december 5th you see that maybe they have a 10 percent grown and a 15 percent growing now, National Weather Service don't have anything. 
And this is what they have. And this is today's date of severe weather. Now, this is what you saw. This is what you are asking me, what's going on with this big severe weather outbreak? There's not going to be one because this is what you were showing yesterday. This is why I try and tell you, you got to watch people. They get desperate if they don't get the views that they want. You really got to just help people and not care about that part. Once you care about that part, it just destroys you. Look at this up here. He showed you a clip from November 21st showing this severe weather coming, not the updates that came all after that. So it wasn't a mistake. He went looking for that information. This is not coming. You can see with the latest update, there's no severe weather showing on SIPs. Very small amount, if any, day three, day four, day five, day six. Then you got that 10% and that low 15% that's growing. You got the day seven disappears. Day eight comes back even weaker. And this is the latest update. So the strongest showing this right here on day six on December 2nd. This is what I'm trying to show you. There's not no big outcome. He was just showing you the worst possible case scenario. That's what they do. They try and look for it. They find it whether it's true or not. It's not true. Now let's change and go over to the Arctic temperatures because you can see it is lagging all the way from the end of November still being our strongest. This is what we're going through for tonight, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Still going to be our strongest days, guys. And you see this is going to slowly pull away to the north as we go towards the middle of December. But you can see at the 50 millibars, the cold air is retracting back. Above average temperatures will be kicking in as we go through December. And then later on, maybe come back with the cold air anomaly. Still showing with the Euro as we go towards the end of November, we have this very cold below average temperatures moving through all the way through the Northeast. While we get above average temperatures start setting up all across the country. Now we are going to have some storms that's going to be brewing up as we go through the beginning of December all across the South and the Southeast. But well, we're going to stay in this above average pattern guys. As we go through the beginning of December, then it's going to change over. Still showing the latest update with National Weather Service. Next 6 to 10 day temperature probability. Below average in the southwest. Above average for everybody else. And as you look all the way towards the 10th of December, you see the above average temperatures hang around. Now we are all feeling these very cold temperatures this morning. You can see this from National Weather Service. The link is in the description so you can go check for yourself. The wind chills are still the worst part. This is for today. As we go on through to tomorrow morning, you can see all the single digits and the teen, this is your temperatures that you're going to be feeling for tomorrow morning all the way towards the south in the 30s, even putting Florida into the 40s as you go towards Wednesday. Look at this. Now it's bringing the 30s over towards the deep south and the 30s and 40s over northern Florida. Watch out for the fall in the Guadans. Once it gets below 50, then you know that you really have that problem. Like you'll run into that on Wednesday for sure. While that brings the eastern side of the U.S. in the teens and the 20s from this front coming through. For Thursday, it's going to stay there towards the southeast. And for Friday, it's going to start moving away. We start going out a little bit of warm-up on Saturday. Then Sunday, your morning is going to start getting better and better. While well, you still stay in the 20s far from Midwest. I don't know why all this is orange, because that's very cold. But at the same time, you still have your highs for this week. For today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this link is in the description, so you can go see for yourself what is coming according to National Weather Service, because this is going to be very cold. Still showing the wind chill is going to be worse, guys. So for your highs for today, your wind chill is still going to feel like single digits for the upper Midwest, and you're going to feel like you're in a 20 still for the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. As you go into tomorrow morning, this is getting even stronger. Look at this. Now you get negative four, negative five wind chills Moving through the upper Midwest from Minnesota, Wisconsin, northern Illinois, Iowa, even portions of Indiana getting them negative wind chills while this moves towards Ohio Valley, Great Lakes in the northeast. And now the south is feeling like you're in the 20s and going towards the 30s and 40s as well. Very cold temperatures for tomorrow, especially with the wind chills. Now tomorrow's highs. Still going to feel like you're in the single digits over here around the Great Lakes to teen temperatures all the way out through the northeast. Very cold wind chills moving through. Please be ready for this. Now, as you go through Wednesday morning, here it goes towards the southeast. Now, your temperatures are just like National Weather Service shows in the 20s and 30s all the way to the southeast. You're still in the teen temperatures all across the Great Lakes and the northeast. And you're still in negative temperatures up here in higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains. Those wind chills are really going to be nasty. 
Now your highs for Wednesday is going to come right back up again. Now you're going to start pushing a little bit further to the north and it's going to start leaving this more and more. Then as you come through Thursday, you're going to start sitting in this pattern. Where you're going to start warming up a little better in the south. But now you're going to be on that little pocket from the southwest going up towards Great Lakes with the cold temperatures. And you'll be warmer on this end and colder on this end for the next pattern. And we can go further than that, but it just... There's no point. I'll keep you updated. I just want to give you the nearest updates that we have. You know, information starts changing. The accuracy changes as you go further. Now, you see that lake effect snow. Not only all the snow you get in New England, a lot of major snow for Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, higher elevations. But all this lake effect snow is going to start kicking in for western Pennsylvania and western New York. Be aware of that. Then we're going to get that next snowstorm right in the beginning of December. Still not showing a lot of snow Maybe as it goes through, it'll start getting heavier for northern Wisconsin as it goes into Canada. I'm still showing that's going to be a Canadian big-time snowstorm, guys. Now, National Weather Service has put this out for your lake effect snow impacts. And you can see that for the impacts, they do have you in the red and the orange as well for northeastern Ohio for western Pennsylvania, western New York, and northern New York. So that would be in the major impacts. Remember, you got some blowing snow will likely lead to snow-covered roads and near whiteout conditions with zero visibility. Be very careful. This is all the way through Wednesday, guys. A big impact of this lake effect snow machine is going to be kicking in. A lot of snow. You see all this blue? This is all one to five inches. But once you go towards that yellow and that red, you start going towards one to two feet. And maybe even more. Look, this is over three feet right here. This is three to maybe four feet of snow coming. This is a lot. So it's still too far to be accurate with the next snowstorm because it's literally six days, then seven days it starts coming in and starts getting heavier. Still showing, if you notice, from yesterday, just like GFS showed, all the heaviness pushes more towards Ontario and Quebec. It pushes more east and northern. GFS as well, even showing lighter amounts. You got to remember, we're going to that above average pattern as well. But I am showing a lot of rainfall bringing more flooding, now, which is a great thing. But look, next five days, and look how this changes. Five to seven days always changes. But look how much this has grown. Also for the northwest, Washington, Oregon, and northern California, we got that second system coming in. That's going to bring y'all a lot of snowfall and higher elevations, but also the rainfall on the coast. And all this is a lot of rain. So just going by the statistics here on Weather Prediction Center, literally in two days. So when you go five days, you have all this blue. There's a little over an inch in the blue. You start getting that two inches in that pink. You start going towards that two to three inches in that red towards Lake Charles. But when you go just two more days, just two more days jumps all of this all the way up to potentially five to seven inches of rainfall. Major flooding potentially coming your way, as well as the West Coast. The year the next seven days showing a lot of rainfall on both ends. Showing right around seven days, getting anywhere from four to six inches of heavy rainfall. Higher elevations, this will be heavy snow. So it will be some good pack of snow in the mountains, but past that, might even add up to even more after that. But you can also see starting December 1st how all this rainfall adds up. Then you go into the second and the third. You get another storm. Then you go even further. You go towards that six days. Starts adding up even more, a lot more. So just from what we can see now, it will change. So please don't take this as definite, definitely the amount of rainfall coming. But look at the amount that adds up. This is a lot. But you can also see that this is right where we need that rainfall, especially Louisiana. You're almost 100% covered with exceptional drought. So southeastern Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, going to Alabama, Tennessee, hopefully Tennessee. Y'all going to be seeing this rainfall and fixing this drought problem finally. We still have that slight risk for heavy rainfall from the 2nd through the 4th for the same areas and going all the way into Tennessee. So hopefully that will reach Tennessee as well. And we have it for the West Coast. And you can see it has changed, like I told you yesterday, for your flash flooding. So starting on Thursday, you are in a marginal in all of this green for flash flooding as we go in this transition. And this is gonna grow for the coast for Friday as well. Bring all the way across Louisiana, Southern Mississippi, Southern Alabama, and the Panhandle of Florida. This is great news. Just be careful. You know it's going to be a lot of flooding on the roads. And that is your weather forecast. So thank you so much for your time, guys. I hope this has helped you in any way. Understand what is coming around a corner. Do not threaten no big, severe weather 
thing. I'm not showing that. I will update you as soon as I hear anything about it. The pattern does not look like it's going to be anything but maybe some hail, if anything. Now, before you go real quick, Proverbs 22, 1 through 4. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and love and favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man foreseeth the evil, and hideth himself, but the simple pass on, and are punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great week this week. Happy Monday to every single one of you. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you happy, peace in your heart and your home every single day of your life. That's the best way to live. You should have peace in your heart and peace in your home. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Peace. That's what everybody wants. Everybody should strive for peace. <laughs> Have a great day. Everybody.